the first question comes from uh, Welter Almeida, who says, uh, how does one go about um, having an airplane and a pilot's license financially viable, or is it doomed just to be an expensive hobby? It is an expensive... I don't know anybody who calls flying a hobby. Um, I, I know a lot of pilots. I've never heard anybody refer to their... Uh, to flying as a hobby, and parenthetically, I've never heard anybody refer to their airplane as a toy. Um, some people will talk about a toy and say, oh, it's a nice toy you've got there, but pilots don't ever talk about planes as toys. It's much more serious than that. A toy is something you just go out and kind of play with mindlessly, you know. An airplane is a different exa- is a different animal. It's An airplane is a relationship um, because because the airplane is liberating in a way that is almost indescribable if, unless you have the bug. Um, most of us remember what it's like to be um, a teenager and get your driver's license and be able to run around and go where you want to go and just have that kind of freedom. The That's really in two dimensions. Uh, technically speaking, when you really want to get down to it, it's really in one dimension because a road... You go down a road and it feels like you got all the freedom in the world, but basically a road has one dimension, you know, east or west or north and south, but you've got one dimension. A boat on the ocean has freedom in two dimensions where you can basically point the nose anywhere you want to because there's no roads in the ocean, but an airplane has a has a full three dimensions of freedom. You can go left and right, up, uh, up and down, and north and south, and bam. It's incredible. So when you, when you um, get a chance to actually fly an airplane, it will blow your mind. It just, it just blew mine anyway. So uh, the thing about it is, Welter, is that you know a lot of people decide they want to take flying lessons, and um, they do it the way I do it, the way most people do it, which is like I can fly, I can afford a lesson a week maybe, or I can afford a lesson every two weeks, and that's how virtually everybody I knew learned how to fly. The problem with that is if you only fly every week or every two weeks, you spend half of your next lesson trying to remember what you did last time. Um, if you're serious about flying and you can afford it or you can get a loan or something, uh, the way people really, if you're really serious about it, you, some people have the ability to basically just fly every day for five hours, in which case they get their license in 10 days, you know, a week, 10 days, something like that. Um, but I've never known anybody who did that. And the one thing I did find uh, was that, you know, when I was learning how to fly welter, I was like really stone cold broke. I was a limo pilot, a limo driver when I got out here. And I was um, trying to, uh, you know, was trying to um, uh, afford helicopter lessons, which were even more expensive, and I would fly once a month. I was just barely scraping enough money to do it. I got a job at the glider port, though, and I, I was working for um, flying lessons, and I still think there's a chance to do that these days if you're a young person you want to really want to do it. I mean, if you go to a flying school, go to enough flying schools, you probably can find somebody who will trade some work for some lessons. And I still think those days are here, even though they're not what they used to be. Uh, back in the old days, if you hung out at the airport and you wanted to sweep a guy's barn and you know, you know wash the airplane and do all the grunt work, he'd give you some flight time in exchange for it. And I think that's, uh, I still believe that's still possible to do that. Um, Victoria Smock wants to know how many uh, hours does it take to achieve pilot status and are the criteria the same in every country? Is your pilot's license valence glo- valid globally? Uh, here in America, w- it, it, flight training is so much cheaper in America than it is in the rest of the world that it makes economic sense for pilots to come to America from Europe or Asia and live here. It's that much cheaper. It's it's enough cheaper so that it's economically sensible for somebody who wants to learn how to fly in Europe or in, um, in China, let's say, or Japan. Japan, a lot of Japanese uh, pilots. It's cheaper for them to get on a you know intercontinental flight land in America, rent an apartment for three weeks or a month or whatever, and take your flying lessons here. Um, the rules in America for private pilot's license are 40 hours. You, you cannot get your license till you had 40 hours. Uh, 20 hours of dual instruction and 20 hours solo. That is the legal minimum before you can take your pilot's uh, license test. I soloed in seven hours, and I think I got my license in 40 or 41. I was really switched on and really wanted to go. Um, the pilot's license is good internationally. Uh, your license never expires, strangely enough, but your ratings do. Um, you you have I have a pilot's license that I've had since I was 31, since 1990, um, and that license does not expire. 
but uh, every two years I have to commit uh, I have to um, I have to take something called a BFR biannual flight review which means that every two years I have to fly with an instructor and that instructor has a it's a pretty cut and dried kind of thing we go up in the airplane we go for a ride he asks me a couple questions and he you know wants to make sure that BFR can be an hour two three hours a BFR could probably be 10 15 minutes if the guy was convinced you knew what you were doing but um, twice oh, sorry once every two years you have to go with an instructor and show him that you can still physically fly and that you still remember enough of the airspace and the rules and all the rest of it so that you don't get in any trouble and the other thing that you have to have in order to fly is um, a medical now this has cost a lot of guys their wings um, the third class medical um, certificate uh, is good for two years and basically um, you just um, go down to a doctor and he does an EKG and they do a drug test and um, they don't even do the EKG basically he just listens to your heart with a stethoscope it looks like are, are you do you look like you're about to keel over no then you probably get your third class license but people who develop heart conditions lose their medicals and they don't get to fly anymore which is why recently when I say recently six seven years ago now I guess maybe a little longer maybe more like ten um, they introduced a new kind of a license called a sport license which is not it, a good way to think of it is this the private pilot's license is the bachelor's degree the commercial license is the master's degree the ATP the airline transport pilot is the PhD and the sport license is the AA degree so it's simpler airplane you don't get to go as many places you can't go as fast that kind of thing but um, you don't need much of a medical so uh, basically as long as you can pass your medical and and every two years you can convince a guy that you still know what you're doing you get to fly and it's uh, it's just tremendous